use the pass to set up the run. As you will know, that uh, they've got to take out, take those linebackers out of the game, put a hat on Nick Reed and Kevin Kane and Banks Floodman. They are impressive. Those linebackers have 158 tackles among the three of them, 24 and a half tackles for a loss. They have 19 sacks coming into the game, and they've only allowed one rushing touchdown in the last seven games dating back to 2004. Elementary, Sean, spread the field. Number two, a hunt and we will go, a hunt and we will go. Hi, oh, the Mario Jayhawks hunt and we will go. <laughs> it finally happened in game number seven. The defense has to make the feathers fly. The Jayhawks have scored no touchdowns in nine quarters. Two field goals are all they have in the last two games. Fly to the ball. Keep the pressure on whomever shows up at quarterback. And Kansas averages only 282 yards a game on offense. Keep control of the game and send them back to Kansas like the Jaybird, naked. <laughs> <laughs> and you got to have heart, a buffalo heart I'm talking about, big and bold. Sure, in... Uh, since 2001, the Buffaloes are 17-3 and against Northern opponents. They know they're the best in the North. They'll come out and play like it, not tentative and fearful as they were last week. So, imaginative offense, aggressive defense, play with a Buffalo heart. Colorado will be 3-1 and in the Big 12 and 5-2 and overall. And I have just set you up for this. <laughs> What's that? Good Times Director of Global Expansion is pretty sure that the reason the Buffs are off to such a nice start uh -huh. is because of the fresh frozen custard and fresh squeezed lemonade. <laughs> so go get some good times and raise your cup to the Buffs. I tell you what, my friend, that, that's the way to kick off your second 1,000 games right there. We got a little, uh, little singing going on. We got naked jaybirds and everything else. By the way, and I don't know what kind of uh, omen this is, Jim. You can maybe kind of give us a historical perspective. Ralphie's not running today. Well, you know what? Uh, there, it, it has happened before, and uh, it was in the Nebraska game, and that was the game where I won't mention his name because I hate to keep embarrassing him. But the kicker was wide right, All right. on the last play of the game, All right. and that's the day that Ralphie didn't run. <laughs> you, you see the reaction. Well, Ryan Johannemeyer <laughs> down here is uh, yeah. You just sent him in a convulsion over here thinking about that game, but. Uh, Anyway, you know, Ralphie came out of the chute in that one and then stopped. That stopped dead. Yeah, yeah. and it, then they had to try to get her back in the trailer. And that, that, when you want to try to move that buffalo and she doesn't want to move. Yeah, 1,500 pounds. Yeah, that's not willing to move. So I think they're wise today. If she's not feeling right, I don't know, do buffaloes take my doll? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All we were told is that Ralphie's not feeling well. Beyond that, with the diagnosis, I'm not going there. So we'll... We're without Ralphie anyway to start the, the opening of the game as uh, the Buffaloes work their way on the top of the field. Uh, we're going to take one more time out. We've got kickoffs straight ahead. Great weekend. They're expecting a crowd of well over 50,000 here today. It's Parents Weekend. The Buffaloes, after wrapping up their three games against the South Division at 2-1, and one, look to wrap up another North Division championship with the first of five straight against their North brethren. The kickoff between the Buffs and the Jayhawks is moments away here on the Colorado Football Network. Colorado Buffaloes Football 2005 with Mark Johnson and Larry Zimmer. News Radio 850 KOA. Denver, Colorado. This is Larry, the links for Frontier Airlines. At Frontier, we're at. Larry, we need to talk. Yeah! Guys, I'm on the air here. Too bad, this can't wait. You expect us to fly 250 flights a day to 52 cities? That's crazy! It's beyond the laws of physics. And I'm no lawbreaker! Guys, when I said we're flying 250 flights a day to 52 cities, I meant Frontier as a whole, meaning all of us. I'm just gonna go then. Need anything? Take the bear. Frontier, a whole different animal. Welcome to the Pepsi Theater Minute. Today, the story of Langusto and Pesto. Ah, Langusto. Oh, Pesto. Cacciatore, lasagna, gorgonzola. Oh, linguine, la carbonara, calzone. 
scalopini, tortellini al pomodoro, bruschetta, prosciutto, ricotta. Pepsi. Pepsi, capellini, salame, pancetta, Pepsi, mortadella. Calzone. Pepsi. Pepsi. Ravioli, scalopine, minestrone, prosciutto. Pepsi e scalopine. Linguini, cannelloni, maccheroni, gnocchi, gorgonzola. Gorgonzola. Bologna. Spaghetti. Antipasti. Parmigiano, provolone, mozzarella, pezzi. <ride> L'angusto, calamari. L'angusto, Pepsi. Pepsi, food's good. Pepsi, it's the cola. So tell me, what do you love about Keto and Mexican Girl? I love the taco salad. It's fast, fresh. Burritos, quesadillas, tacos. Five sauces. Oh, yeah. I got to the point that if I had to eat something one more time that wasn't good for me, just because I was in a hurry, I was going to go crazy. And I found Qdoba, and I'm hooked. Yeah, you can get here for a month straight to get something different every day. Everybody can make what they want, and mm, that's a good burrito. <laughs> that's what I love. That's what I love about Qdoba. Qdoba Mexican Grill. Hundreds of original flavors you won't find anywhere else. All made fast, fresh, and right in front of you. What are you going to love at Qdoba? Buffs Football, News Radio, 850 KOA. And we come here from Folsom Field, one of the most beautiful settings in all of college football. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Big 12 Conference Football, along with Larry Zimmer. I'm Mark Johnson. This afternoon, the Buffalo is returning here to their home field to take on the Kansas Jayhawks, the first of five against their North Division brethren. The Buffs now sitting at 4-2 overall, 2-1 two in Big 12 Conference play. Meanwhile, Mark Mangino's Jayhawks, 3-3 three three overall, 0-3 in Big 12 coverage play. Before we get this one underway, let's send it down to our third member of our broadcast team, former Buff quarterback Charles Johnson. CJ, big bounce back game, I think, today after last uh, week's 42-17 loss in Texas for the Buffs. Mark, you're absolutely right. You think about it, last two weeks, uh, A&M at home, the Longhorns on the road. Now you come home to play a Kansas team. I know Coach Barnett a little bit concerned about whether or not this team is taking the Jayhawks serious. I guarantee you this team is fired up, Mark. I'm looking for an explosion from the Buffaloes very early in this football game, buddy. All right, CJ. Charles is just out in the locker room with the Buffs, and they kept exploding out of the tunnel. Colorado hey. won the opening coin toss and deferred to the second half, Larry. Charles sounds like he's as fired up as they are. <laughs> you know, if he wasn't so old and fragile, I'll bet he'd try to run out of the field today. So, uh, oh, he pulled the hands. Well, I know. That's what he, that's what he told us. It's tough when you get old. Mason Crosby's got it teed up. The 35 oh. yard line off to our left. And for the Kansas Jayhawks, back to return is Greg Higgins. Good return man, averaging about 15 and a half per return. Mason Crosby is all pumped up and kicks it through the uprights. And that always brings a rise out of the crowd here at Folsom Field. And the touchback in Kansas has it first and 10 from their own 20-yard line. He could have returned that one 15 and a half and it had been a safety. <laughs> That's right. Still would have been out of the end zone. <laughs> Kansas wearing their own white uniforms. The blue helmets with the KU on the side, white jerseys, white pants, blue trim down the side, red socks. Really very New York Giant-esque, if you will. Yeah, isn't that interesting with the Broncos playing the Giants tomorrow? That's right. Bucks in their black jerseys, gold pants, gold helmets, black socks, black shoes. And in a quarterback, it is Ryan Luke. We expected to see the senior out of Walnut Creek, California. Throws it right side on first down. Passes deflected up in the air by Alex Lagon and almost ricocheted back into the hands of the quarterback, Ryan Luke. Incomplete. Second down to 10 forthcoming for the Kansas Jayhawks. Hey, Mark, in these defensive ends for the Buffs, how many, if we kept stats on that, how many times they have deflected ball? That's got to be about six or seven, I would think, through the uh, six games, now six plus games so far. And watch out, Charles Gordon lined up slot left. Second down to 10 for the 20. Just underway, opening quarter. KU driving from right to left. Ball dead center of the field. One running back is Clark Green, directly behind Brian Luke. Gives him the draw play, runs it up inside, and he runs directly in to Jordan Dizon. Does Green. He's able to muscle his way, his way out to the 25 yard line, gain of five yards. Dizon leading the way there defensively for the Buffs. Colorado on defense, right and look on the ends. Gary and Matapuna, the tackles, the linebackers, Iwu, Washington, Dizon, who just made the stop. And again, instead of Lorenzo Sims, Terry Washington at one corner, Jared Burrell on the other side of the two safeties. They've been great all season long. J.J. Billingsley and Tyrone Henderson at the free safety spot. Third down at five. Kansas on the season, 108th in the country, only 28% conversion on third down. Spotlight formation. Luke, quick drop, whips it out right side and threw it out of bounds. Charles Gordon on a bubble screen was lining up. He was 
even with the numbers in the far side, and there is exactly why this Kansas team will struggle with offense, Yep, He threw that ball about 12 yards over Gordon's head. Yeah, but there's a good reason he did. Baca Manapuna put a shoulder right into his midsection just about the time he threw the ball. Kyle Tucker is out the puck to the way, the sophomore from Katy, Texas. He's pretty good, too. He is a good one. In fact, uh, number two in the country in that punting. Just over 40 yards per on fourth down. Only 46 seconds in. Stephon Robinson awaits off to her left at the 33-yard line. Snap to his right, and the punter, Tucker, puts the foot to it. Not a real long one. Bounces down inside the 35 and takes a shot to the near sideline out of bounds at the 34-yard line. And that's where Colorado has its first offensive possession starting from. A 41-yard punt. No return for Kansas. And the Buffaloes have it first down and 10. Around their own 34-yard line, moving from left to right. Here comes Joel Platt. And what a career he continues to have. He, by the way, is sneaking up on the all-time passing record in Colorado history. And he's 367 yards here today to catch Cordell Stewart. Platt was 6,114. Cordell was 6,481. He needs two touchdown passes to catch it that one. First down and 10 for the 34 for the bus. Kloppenstein, slot right in motion through the backfield. Hugh Charles alone, setback pitch, stretch play left side. Charles looking for blockers. Finally stop and go. Cuts around the corner across the 35 and out of bounds to the 36. Out a flag down to the play. Charles picks up just a couple of yards and a scamper. Chances are this one's going against the Buffs. A hold around the left side. Steve, Steve Usacek, by the way, the referee today. And a chop block called against the Buffaloes. Is the indication. Steve, a veteran Big 12 official, Big 8 official from uh, North Glen. We have a chop block on the offense. Number 66. 15 yard penalty. Still first down. Uh, that's costly off the top here. Brian Daniels, the junior from Evergreen, 6'4, 300 pounds, went to Mullen High School, injured uh, earlier this season, missed the New Mexico State Miami games with uh, a bit of an injury. So that moves the ball back all the way inside the 20 to the 19. And those are the kind of mistakes that Colorado just cannot do, and they have been doing them, trying to cut them out, but uh, they start the game with a major penalty. For a minute and scoreless, Buffs' first offensive possession, first down to 25, back to the offset, I play action, Clatt looks left, rifles out there, Patrick Williams the catch, and he makes the grab of the 23, and he's hauled down right there at the 23, Theo Baines on the stop, ends up being a gain of four yards, second down and 21, forthcoming now for Colorado. That's the kind of offense they've got to do. They've got to really open it up. Kansas is really going to uh, put seven, eight guys in the box because they like to move uh, Jerome Kemp to safety right up on the line of scrimmage as well. And those linebackers uh, can really run. Reed, Kane, and Flutman. Second down at 21. Stephon Robinson slot right. Ball left hash mark as Colorado marches from left to right. Quick throw near side. Robinson in and out of his hands, and it's incomplete. As they tried to line up the bubble screen here on the near sideline, Evan Judge was working his way downfield, blocking, incomplete pass. Third down at 21, now forthcoming for the Bucs. Gary Barnett indicated that you'd be seeing a lot more of Stephon Robinson. They've sort of moved him up on the depth chart as far as the receivers. And a uh, little unhappy, frankly, with uh, Alvin Barnett. Uh, hasn't been doing, uh, making the progress that they wanted him to do, so they're going to take a look at Stephon. I mentioned that Kansas struggles offensively on third down. Defensively, they're very salty. In fact, number 10 in the country, giving up only 28% on third down. Third down at 21 for the bus. Slot right formation, high snap over the head of Joel Platt. It's loose. Platt stumbles. Now he gets up and scrambles after it and dives on it at the five-yard line. And the ball is down right there at the five. Paul Como is there to make sure the quarterback is down. By contact, a loss of 18 yards. A bad snap went up over the head of Joel Platt. And now that puts the Buffs offense in a tough position for the punter, John Torp, who comes out. He'll be standing about eight yards deep in his own end zone to kick this one away. Not exactly the start they had against Texas A&M two weeks ago. No, certainly not. Ended up being a 51-yard reception by Hugh Charles for a touchdown against the Aggies. Watch out for that returner, Charles Gordon. He does it all. One of the best in the country. Waist high snap to Torp, the left-footed fighter really booms one. Spiraling and Gordon drifting back, taking it right at the 35-yard line. Stutter step move. Stiff arms Terry Washington. Bends around a corner. Hit around the ankles by Ryan Walters and all down to the 43-yard line. So all things considered, as bad as it could have been in that situation, a booming punt by John Torp and a return of just a, a few yards by Charles Gordon. 
And the Jayhawks have it first down at 10 for their own 45. 58 yards and a return of 15. Yeah, great punt by Torp. Time out on the field. Scoreless Jayhawks with it when we come back here on the Colorado Football Network. CU Buffs, News Radio 850 KOA. Listen up, men. Our search objective is the fair sex, and our search radius is the entire 50 states. So what I need is a search of every shoe store, juice bar, health club, and foot club in that area. This is what we've all been training for. Now go get them. Coors Light and Maxim are teaming up to bring you a nationwide hunt for hotties. We're recruiting every able-bodied man in the country to help us find the next Coors Light Maxim girl. So gather your buddies, grab an ice-cold silver bullet, and start your search at CoorsLight.com. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Beer. Be a part of the pre- or post-game celebration in the gardens at the Millennium Harvest House Hotel. At every home game, the Millennium Harvest House provides the best and fun for all. Join your friends and all other Buff fans for burgers, hot dogs, and beer, along with all the game day energy. Watch our 14-foot TV in the gardens, and we have big screen TVs inside the bar for your football-watching pleasure. Food and drinks begin three hours prior to kickoff and last throughout the day. So be a part of the game day celebration at the Millennium Harvest House and go Buffs! Colorado Buffaloes football, News Radio 850 KOA. We're back at Bolson Field. The uh, Buffaloes with a 58-yard punt by Torp and good coverage on Gordon downfield. We mentioned uh, Charles Gordon. He is a do-it-all guy. He goes both ways for the Jayhawks, both a cornerback and a wide receiver. He returns punts, and he even threw a pass uh, last week. So he's really got to keep an eye on Gordon wherever he is on the field. Now Colorado's defense has to continue to play very aggressive. Now here comes KU, first and 10th of its own 45-yard line. Ball left hash mark as the Jayhawks march from right to left. Luke turns, hands off to Green. The tailback runs it up inside, runs into a brick wall. They're wearing a number 44 jersey by the name of Jordan Dizon, who hauls him down, but it is a short gain of two, almost three yards. Hey, we're going to go hot bar from Qdoba Mexican Grill, perfect for watching the game at home or at your next tailgate. Visit Qdoba.com for the location nearest you. And what are you going to love at Qdoba? Jordan Dyson comes in with uh, 28 tackles, a little bit below the average of what he had last year when he had 82. Trips right formation. The inside wide receiver is Charles Gordon on second down and seven for the 48 for Kansas. Low quick drop, looks right, looks left, looks over the middle, throws incomplete. Pass intended right over the middle for Jeff Foster, a little used wide receiver for Kansas. On the coverage was Jared Pearl, incomplete as the pass was a bit high. Third down at seven. Staring the Jayhawks in the face. Substitutions now as uh, Gardner McKay and Tommy Hubbard come in. Thaddeus Washington, James Gary out. So the nickel make a dime defense out there now for the Buffaloes. Uh, third down at seven for the 48-yard line. Out of the shotgun loop. Trips to the right. Boundary to the left. The senior quarterback calls for the ball, takes it chest high, spins in his hands, looks off to the right, throws it out there at Charles Gordon. He makes the grab, and he's hauled down. A great hit initially by J.J. Billingsley. And then the second wave of the defenders came in to clean it up and bring him down. A gain of only two yards. That brings up fourth down and five. And now Kansas has to punt it away. Hey, we're setting up the screen out there, Mark, and Billingsley just blew it up by, by going right through him and uh, made the initial contact. And uh, Colorado, for the second time, holds. Kyle Tucker for his second punt. First one of 41 yards. He stands at the 35-yard line up to a right for Kansas. Stephon Robinson at the 10 off to our left, set to return. Shadows across the entire field here at Folsom Field. High snap, hold down. Tucker under pressure. In fact, someone might have got a hand on that one. It is deflected out of bounds to the far side. It actually landed about three deep rows up here at Folsom Field on the east sideline. And they mark it out of bounds. Well, that, now Vickers is saying, he's trying to tell Steve Buzicek, hey, I got a hand on it. It can't be running into the punter because they dropped the flag on for running into the punter. Well, I heard I heard the slap. Somebody got a hand on that ball. Yeah, and, and uh, Vickers, who was in there, he's screaming about it to the officials, and they've got to take a look at that. Marcus Burton is the player that got through there and made contact. And uh, with all the microphones we have down the field, you can hear that slap sound that you normally hear when a kick or a punt is blocked. And now let's see. The officials have uh, all come together and they've talked about it. Now Steve Usechek is running over to the near sideline to converse with Mark Mangino, the head coach at Kansas. 10.56 to play in this opening quarter, scoreless. And Usechek continues to bark over to the near sideline of Mark Mangino. And now they pick the flag up, and let's get the official word 
I don't think you're going to get it. Yeah, they are. Yeah, he's running into the kicker. Running into the kicker wow. on a receiving team. A five-yard penalty. Still fourth down. Jim, I could have swore when Tucker kicked that ball, I heard the slap of a hand hit again, and it came out of there so odd, something had to touch that football. I agree with you. Now, so there's the first, uh, what appears to be a blowing call of this ball game. Now, that makes it fourth down and about a foot for Kansas. And Kansas on fourth down conversion, six out of seven. Or, I'm sorry, they are one of seven, one of seven. KU with the power formation, two tight ends out there, two wide receivers, and Luke looks over the near sideline and calls timeout. So I don't know if they were thinking at that point, let's go out there and see if we can draw them off sides. That does not show a great deal of confidence in your offensive front when uh, you're elected to go for a fourth down at about 10 inches. Timeout the field. We'll take a break as well. Just inside 11 to play opening quarter. Scoreless Kansas facing a fourth down when we come back at the Colorado Football Network. Buffs Football. News Radio 850 KOA. I train hard and I play hard. So last season when an injury threatened to take me out of the game, I didn't mess around. I went to CU Sports Medicine. Why? The doctors at CU Sports Medicine are the team physicians for the CU Buffs. Who better to provide me with advice than the doctors collegiate and professional athletes trust? If you're serious about the game, Call the doctors who are serious about sports medicine. CU Sports Medicine, now in Boulder and Denver. Call today, 303-871-7752. 303-871-7752. Hey, Buffalo fans, Buffalo sports properties and fantastic sports are working together this season to take you on the road with the Buffaloes. Available packages include all travel accommodations and game tickets at the best prices available. And in addition to saving money, you'll also be supporting your athletic department. Call toll-free 1-877-FANS-TO-GO. That's 1-877-FANS-TO-GO or go to officialfantour.com. Fantastic sports, affordable packages, priceless memories. CU Buffs, News Radio 850 KOA. Well, we'll see what the Jayhawks decide to do. They sent the offense out. Looks like he's going to do it again. As we mentioned a moment ago, they're 11th in the conference on fourth down conversions, one out of seven. But this is uh, about a half yard to go here. All right, they've got a power formation out there. Well, back to the eye, I should say. They've, they've actually pulled one tight end out. Derek Five is lined up to the left side, the unbalanced line. Back to the eye, green the tail of the tail behind the fullback. Luke Gunner center turns. Play action, boots out to his left, and a pressure ground and sack back at the 42 yard line. And Thaddeus Washington came bullet through there. Like a steamroller brought the quarterback down for a loss of 13 yards. So much for that call on fourth down. That might be the defensive play of the game. Colorado's going to get the ball in Kansas territory as a result of that. Why, Zip? Why would you call that play in that situation? Yeah, the quarterback run backward a minimum of seven <laughs> yards, rolling out, booting to his left to throw it downfield. Wow. Yeah, it didn't seem to surprise Thaddeus at all. He was no. going after the quarterback. Wow, so the first big break, turnover on downs. For Kansas, 10.48 to play in this opening quarter. Scoreless first down and 10 now for the Buffs from the Kansas 43-yard line. Back to the eye, tail of the tail behind Lawrence Vickers is Hugh Charles. Dusty Sprague in motion, clap to snap. Play action, sets up at midfield, looks to his right, whips it out there, catches made at the 40 by Hugh Charles, running at the 30. It's a block, cuts left at the 25. He's hit around the 23 and finally hauled down, making the stop. Outstanding middle linebacker Kevin Kane for Kansas, but a pickup of 21 yards, and you can hear the raining down of Hugh from the stands here at Folsom Field. First down, Colorado. Yeah, you know, fans often, you, have, you hear that on the radio on our crowd mic, and it sounds like they might be booing. Yeah. You know, boo, boo, boo. No, it's Hugh. 10.37 to play opening frame. Sipnuski tight end left. Kloppenstein tight end right. The two wide receivers are Sprague and Patrick Williams. Ball right hash mark. The vote set back at first and 10 for the Kansas 22. It's Hugh Charles. Clatt turns to his left. Hands up to Charles. Has a bit of a hole and squirts through it as he's able to work his way inside the 20 down to the 19-yard line. Gain of three yards. Second down at seven upcoming for the Buffaloes. Now down to the sideline of Charles Johnson. Hey, guys, I tell you what, before the uh, before coming out of the locker room, Coach Barnett told the defense to expect Kansas to do things like that, go for it on fourth down in the middle of the field, and it didn't take long to see the Jayhawks kind of pulling out the stops there, guys. Back to you. Hey, Charles, did he get a hand on that punt? It appeared to me that he did get a hand on the punt. He certainly lobbied for it. Uh, the ref didn't buy it. Worked out for the Buffs anyway. All right, second down, a long seven, short eight for the 20-yard line. 
Sipniewski standing up on the right side, shifts in motion to the left now. Clack the snap, back pedals, scanning the secondary, whips it downfield, wide open, end zone, touchdown. Quinn Sipniewski was all by his lonesome, turned and made the grab with the one, and he waltzes on in, a 19-yard strike, and the Buffaloes take a 6-0 lead with 9.35 to play in this opening quarter, the third touchdown of the season for Quinn Sipniewski. That's what they needed to do. They get the ball at the 43, one pass, one run, and then they let that tight end float down the field, and there was nobody within 10 yards of Quinn Sipniewski, and uh, Joel put it right on the button. Beautiful pass by Sipniewski, and that is the 39th career touchdown pass for Joel Platt. He is now one behind Coy Detmer for the all-time lead. The extra point by Mason Crosby right now on Broadway to make it 7 up 9.35 to play opening quarter. The Buffaloes, after KU turns it over on downs with an odd call on fourth and inches. And the Bucks take over after the sack by Thaddeus Washington marching down the field. The 19-yard strike from Platt to Sipnewski, 7 up Colorado with an early lead over Kansas here at the Colorado Football Network. Colorado Buffaloes football. News Radio 850 KOA. 150 years, Wells Fargo has been a part of the community. And for over 140 years, CU has been a part of Colorado. Wells Fargo is your home for all of your financial services needs, from mortgages to business loans to credit cards and checking accounts. Wells Fargo can answer your needs as a customer, just like the buffs. Wells Fargo is focused on excellence. As a part of Wells Fargo's service to CU fans, alumni, and students, we're proud to introduce Buffs Checking. Visit a Wells Fargo branch in Boulder today and get in the game. Wells Fargo, the next stage. Hey, Buff fans, remember, it's a quick trip to DIA from Boulder using the Northwest Parkway and E-470. Take US-36 to the Northwest Parkway exit in Broomfield. Also, be sure to log on to ExpressToll.com to open an Express Toll account. Not only will you have the luxury of traveling nonstop on the Northwest Parkway and E-470, but your Express Toll account also entitles you to discounts and freebies at area businesses as well as special offers throughout the year. So whether you're headed to the game, the airport, or even Flatirons Mall, the Northwest Parkway is the fastest way to get there. Buffs football. News Radio 850 KOA. Once again, Larry Zimmer along with uh, Mark Johnson and Charles Johnson down on the sideline. Colorado goes up 7 0. Going back to that uh, fourth down play, you had fourth and about a foot at the Colorado 45. It's not, it's a gamble <clears throat> this early in the game. Maybe you say to go for that. But if you're going to go for it, you've got a quarterback who's 6'8 and 225 pounds. Yep. Let him take the ball and run straight ahead. My goodness, all he's got to do is fall over, and, and he picks up the first down. Well, if you're going to go for it, go for it then. Right. Don't, don't just uh, you know, call some play like that. It's going to lose a yardage. Run. I mean, you know, maybe Mark thought that he could pick up six points doing that, and points are hard to come by for the Jayhawks, but uh, that cost him. Well, the Bucks are at top 7 nothing. Here's the ensuing kickoff by Mason Crosby at his high end of a end. Very deep once again. And uh, going to give another field goal. He put that one to the uprights once again. And so the uh, Jayhawks will start over first and 10 for their own 20-yard line. Quick 10-second timeout to allow our network affiliates to identify themselves. This is the Colorado Football Network. This is what we do. Colorado's morning news. Mike Rosen. Rush Limbaugh. Dave Logan and Lois Malconian on the ride home. News. Sports. Weather. Time saver traffic. And the Denver Broncos. This is what we do. On News Radio 850 KOA. Here comes the quarterback, Ryan Luke, the senior out of Walnut Creek, California. They've been working on him, trying to speed up his delivery, his release, if you will, on his pass. So far, we haven't seen the fruits of that labor. First and 10 for the 20. Luke, the snap turns to his left, hands out the green, the tailback, runs it up inside, runs right. And the big old James Gary, the defensive captain for the Buffaloes, and a short pickup of a couple of yards. Gary this week, Sam, really after that Texas game, being one of the two defensive captains, really challenged this Colorado defense to get back to where it was prior to that Longhorn game. Well, I know Gary's a little bit worried about uh, the leadership on the defense, and he's challenged them because you got two guys out of there who are real leaders in, in, oh, yeah. uh, in Alonzo and, and uh, Lorenzo. Lorenzo, yeah. Second down, roughly eight to go for the 21-yard line. Find the tight end shifting from right to left in motion. Luke, quick drop, looks off to his right, whips it out there, and it's over the top of the intended receiver, Charles Gordon, who is running a short out. Great coverage by Brian Ewu, the buff linebacker for the Buffaloes. Incomplete pass, third down. And a long eight upcoming now for Kansas. You know, the, the quarterback situation is uh, really serious for Kansas. They've got good receivers. I mean, you got Gordon there, you got Mark Simmons, you got Marcus Henry, and uh, a great junior college guy has come in, Brian Murphy. Brian Murphy. They can't get the ball to him. 
Third down, a long eight for the 21. Slot wide formation. This time, Luke out of the shotgun. Flanked to his left by Clark Green, the tailback. Shotgun snap, chest high. Back coming Luke under pressure. He's grabbed and he's sacked once again. The second time the quarterback has gone down in this ball game, And that time, pressure was coming from all over the place. And Brian Ewu ends up with the sack. In fact, believe it or not, that's uh, Ewu's first sack of the campaign. A loss of six yards, fourth down. And 15 yards to go, and KU about ready to punt it away. Colorado is number 12 in the Big 12 in sacks with nine. Now they've got 11. Uh, KU has now allowed their 14th sack. Kyle Tucker stands at the goal line at the south end of the field, off to a right, ready to punt it away. Stephon Robinson at the 40, off to our left to receive. High snap. He knocks it down at the goal line, picks it up, now throws it out of the back of the end zone, and Colorado has the safety. 8-12 to play in this second quarter, and Kansas on offense is just coming apart at the seams. The snap was high. Tucker went up and tapped it down to himself. It dropped to his feet. He picked it up and smartly turned, ran towards the back of the end zone, just threw it out of the back of the end zone for the safety. Ben Burney got in his face once he picked it off the shoe tops. The freshman defensive back, and Tucker had nothing else to do but just get rid of it. 9-0 is our score. That was almost as odd. Remember the play a few weeks ago by K-State where the punter forgot to go out there? Yeah, and they still snapped the ball. <laughs> they still snapped the ball, and there was no punt. And it just went flying out of the back of the end zone. But that one was nearly as bad. So the Buffs putting more points on the board. Again, with 8-12 to play in his first. Well, actually, he, he made a heady play by, yes, he did. by yes, throwing he did. it out of there. But because, you know, you tackle him, he fumbles the ball. Yeah, that's yeah. a touchdown. Yep. Yeah. And so they teach those kickers in their situations, just grab it, get rid of it, throw it out the back of the end zone to make sure you only give up two points and minimize the damage. And so now Kansas has to kick it away to the Buffaloes. Seven yards of total offense so far in what is now, what, three possessions for the Jayhawks. Luke, Luke is now passing one out of five for two yards. The only pass he completed was that screen pass that Billingsley busted up. And so the Jayhawks will kick it off. Bernard Jackson and Stephon Robinson back to return off to our left for the Buffaloes. 9-0. Colorado on top. There's a kickoff. And Stephon takes to the 9-yard line. Has blockers straight ahead. 15-20. Cuts left to the 25-yard line. Breaks one tackle. Still on his feet. And he's able to work his way all the way out to the 30-yard line before he's hauled down. A beautiful return by Stephon Robinson to 21 yards. Eric Washington eventually out the tackle for Kansas and Colorado. Back in business. First down and 10 from its own 30-yard line with just over 8 minutes to play in quarter number 1. That was really a heck of a kick because, uh, you know, one of the things about a safety is you immediately got to give up the ball again and you get that free kick from the 20-yard line. And usually the offense will get that ball uh, up around midfield, but uh, right. not this way. Buffs on offense once again. First down at 10 for the 30. H back and tight into the right. Now Kloppenstein in motion through the backfield from right to left. Flat turns, hands off. Hugh Charles makes a beautiful move. He's able to burst his way through the line of scrimmage out across the 33 to the 34 and cut down there. Ends up being a gain of four yards. Eric Washington on the tackle for Kansas. And Hugh, I am simply awed and amazed sometimes by the way he's able to cut on natural turf. That time, one defender for KU ended up with an armful of errors. Hugh just all of a sudden at full speed went to his left. And eluded the man. It was uh, James McClinton, who was the guy that came up with an armful of air. Second down at six for the 34. Ball center of the field. Buffs marching from left to right. Slot right formation. Vickers lined up wide left in motion now. Clap the snap, turns, play action. Under pressure, dumps it near side. Vickers to grab out the right flat. He's grabbed at the 30 and all down. Well, that time, nice job and loss of two yards defensively by Rodney Fowler. The outstanding free safety for Kansas, who read that as Vickers. Came bleeding out of the backfield to the right-hand side. Man caught the swing pass, and he was found right there by Fowler, who brought him down. In total defense, uh, Texas did a heck of a job today uh, against Texas Tech, and Nebraska was number two, number 12 in the country. They won't be anymore after the licking that Missouri put on. Third down and nine now for the Buffs. Colorado, so far in this ball game, 0 of 3 on third down conversions. Flat out of the shotgun, takes a snap, chest high, under pressure, rifles it near side, and it is down near the feet, out in the right flat around the 45-yard line of Patrick Williams. Incomplete. Now the Buffaloes have to pump this away. Akeem Tlaib, now the coverage on Patrick Williams. Akeem Tlaib. He's a redshirt freshman from Richardson, Texas. 
Back to return, Charles Gordon now on fourth and nine for the Bucs. A 58-yard punt the last time John Torp was on the field. He's at the 17-yard line off to our left. Beautiful night here in Boulder for Big 12 Conference football. Torp awaits. Now they're Tommy Hubbard, who is the captain out there on the punt team, is changing the formation. There's his snap. Waist high for Torp. Left-footed punter puts the foot to it. It is high and warbling. Gordon with the fair catch signal, backpedals and makes the grab around the 16-yard line. That's where KU has it with 6.31 to play. And the first quarter, 9-0, Colorado on top. 53 yards on, on that punt. And uh, once again, Torp uh, shows how well he can put that ball down there. Uh, he has had 14 inside the 50 and only four touchbacks, and that was a fair catch by guard. To the sideline, Charles Johnson. Hey, guys, there was some confusion as to whether or not uh, there was a tip on the on the punt by Kansas. To prove the point, the referee in that little conversation I had with the referee on the sideline, he had asked if I heard otherwise. I said yes. He said, uh-oh, uh, we may have made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> and they first, trust you, huh, Charles? Yeah, how about that? First down attempt for the 17 inside handoff to Green. Gets it out across the 25, still running up near the 29, and he's hammered down right there. Nice run by Clark Green. The tailback, a gain of 13 yards, first down carry for Kansas. J.J. Billingsley on the tackle eventually. Uh, some great blocking up front by Kansas' offensive line. And that's the first first down of the game for KU. And a nice play because uh, that was that little trap play inside. And uh, Colorado uh, didn't have the safety up there, and uh, Billingsley ultimately caught up with the play. First down and 10 now for Kansas. From its own 30-yard line, ball left, hash mark moving from right to left out of the shotgun. New quarterback out there is Jason Swanson. So they have brought the sophomore from the City College of San Francisco in. Whips the Simmons out the left flat, makes the grab at the 35-yard line, curls around, and is able to work his way all the way up to the 37 between before Jarrett Burrell is there to bring him down. A gain of uh, seven, almost eight yards. Second down and two upcoming now for Kansas. And so Swanson... Uh, completes his first pass of the ball game. He hasn't played this year. He's from San Diego. His only start of his career was against CU last year in Lawrence. And that was and, a short one. Yeah, he injured his shoulder on the third series. Matt Machesney, the uh, outstanding senior defensive tackle from a year ago, really put a licking on Swanson, and he had to leave the ball game. Plus went on to win that game, 31-20. Second down and two, the 38. Trips right formation, ball left, hash mark, hitting boundary side left, shotgun snap to Swanson, inside hand up to Green, picks up the first down, running hard, runs over the top of J.J. Billingsley, the 45, and finally is cut down, just shy of the 50-yard line around the 49, Tyrone Anderson on the tackle, and officially they spot him down, actually they move him back about a yard to the 30, make a 48-yard line, a 10-yard gain, but it is enough for a first down for KU. Amazing what the change in quarterback will do, they, uh, of course, last year he had Kansas off to a lead before he got hurt. So uh, Jason Swanson uh, could make a difference in this Jayhawk offense. Colorado better be uh, ready for it. Yep, Kansas jumped out 14-0 over the Bucks a year ago. First down and 10 for the 48. Swanson gives off of the draw play, and again Green is able to muscle his way across the 50, penetrates Buff territory for the first time before he's hauled down at the 49-yard line. A gain of four yards, Thaddeus Washington leading a host of Buffaloes, collaborating on the stop for CU. Second down and seven upcoming now for the Kansas Jayhawks. Hey, Old County Products for all your business imaging needs. Contact Old County Products at 303-295-0741 or on the web at oldcountyproducts.com. Along with the Larry Zimmer, Charles Johnson down on the sideline, Ben Vanneker, statistician, Ryan Joe Hattingbeyer, the spotter, Shannon Scott, the engineer, the executive producer of Colorado football is... Alan Jackson, I'm Mark Johnson. Nice to have you along on this Parents Weekend here in Boulder for Big 12 Conference Football. 9-0 Colorado with the lead. 4.33 to play in this opening quarter. Kansas with it at midfield. Second down at 7 now for the Buffalo 49-yard line. Trips right formation. Ball left hash mark. Swanson in relief of Luke under center. Green the lone setback behind the sophomore. Swanson a snap, quick three-step drop, pumps once, pumps twice, looking downfield, now rifles it downfield, Charles Gordon is there, makes the grab with the 10-yard line, right in front of the Buff defender, he's cut down inside the nine at nearly the eight-yard line. Charles Gordon just caught that ball that went right over the outstretched hands of Tyrone Henderson, a gain of 41 yards, and the change of quarterback has paid huge dividends for the uh, Jayhawks early on. 
Well, Colorado just let him sit back there uh, that time. They were putting pressure on Luke. They seem to be a little reluctant right now on Swanson. Maybe it's just that uh, uh, Mike Hankwitz wants to take a look at him and, and see what's going to work best in putting pressure. But that time, he had all day. He was swinging on the swing in the backyard to throw that one. It's the four-minute mark of this first quarter. Remember, Kansas has not found the end zone in nine quarters. Pitch, left side, green, trying to bend it around. He's hit at the 10-yard line and knocked out of bounds. Here on the near sideline, Jared Burrell and Abraham Wright collaborating on the stop by Clark Green. Good a job. loss of two yards. Good job of stringing it out, getting him to the sideline, and not letting him make that cut inside. Burrell was uh, the first one up there to uh, to cut off that corner for him, and he ends up losing a couple. Now the wide receiver in, Brandon McAndrews, the fullback out, Dominic Rue, a junior from Los Angeles, enters the lineup. Simmons, along with Burr. And Charles goes trips right. Root goes wide left. Second down at 11 from the 11-yard line. From just outside the 11. Let's call it second and goal. Shotgun snap up coming to slot to chest high. Back pedals. Look to his right under pressure. And he's grabbed to the 20 and slammed down. Throws it right into the hands of one of the Buff defenders. Alex Lagon got there and drove him right into the turf. But he threw the ball right in the hands of Abraham Wright. And Abraham bobbled it and dropped it near pickoff by the Colorado Buffaloes. And now there's a late flag thrown into the pile. I think they might be calling intentional grounding on it because he was definitely not outside the box. Yep, that's, that's what the indication is. is, yeah. Lagan grabs Swanson. It was starting to drive down to the turf, and Swanson just whipped it away. And it ended up being a near disaster as Wright nearly came up with the interception. 9 up in Colorado. Inside four to play in this opening quarter. Steve Usachek, the referee, continues to converse with his umpiring brethren. Now he calls them all together. All seven of them standing inside the 20-yard line talking yep. it over. The only thing they could be, uh, he's talking to Rusty Weir, the uh, umpire, and probably the question mark is, was there someone there that he might have been throwing it to? I don't think so. I think there was only offensive linemen around the area. Nope. Disregard the play. Oh, my. The ball was tipped. Third down. Uh, well, they must be saying that Alex Lagon got a hand on that ball as it was being released because there was nobody else around. So disregard the flag. That makes it third down and goal to goal from just outside the 11-yard line. And so far, the switching quarterback, Jason Swanson, has worked out well for KU. Did the Buffs stand up defensively? Swanson out of the shotgun. Trips to his right. Clark Green flanks the quarterback to his right in the backfield. Just high snap. Swanson retreats from behind. He's hit. Throws it over the middle. Catch is made at the 12-yard line by Clark. He rumbles inside the 10, and he's cut down at the 8-yard line. Akarika Don ultimately made the stop. A gain of 4 yards. That brings up fourth down and goal to goal from the 8. And a near quarterback sack once again. Sam as the Buffs were all over Swanson as he delivered that football. Yep. Abraham Wright was right there. And so was Brian Ewu. They were, uh, they both came and Gorsett sort of left that middle open when he dumped the pass off and got it over the middle, but the Buffs did a great job of, of cutting it off. Scott Webb, he's a redshirt sophomore from Tulsa, Oklahoma, out for the extra point. It's spotted just outside the 15, so a 25-yard kick is up. It's on its way, and it is good. And so the Buffs defense minimized the damage with 3.07 to play in this opening quarter. Colorado now leads it 9-3 to after that 20, let's call it a 26-yard field goal. Uh, by Scott Webb. Well, they had that big 41-yard pass in there when uh, Swanson uh, hit Gordon, and that put the ball down in the goal-to-go situation. But Colorado's uh, red zone defense does it again. They're number three in the conference. Uh, 21. It's the 22nd time that opponents have gone inside the red zone, and they've had 16 scores, but uh, five of them have been field goals. So the score is 9-3. to three. Ends up being a nine-play, 65-yard drive for Kansas. And the time of possession, three minutes and 24 seconds. Now to get that one 41-yard pass play, the big gainer for Kansas in that drive. Nine to three again to score. A couple of the injury updates we're getting from downstairs. Ryan Walters injured his shoulder during a special teams play a while ago when he made a stop on Charles Gordon. He is questionable return. And the Walter Boydo sprained his shoulder as well during special teams play. And again, he's questionable. 
That's not good because he's the backup of both ends. That means Maurice Lucas, the freshman who played for the first time against Texas last week, will probably have to do quite a bit of playing. Here's the kickoff by Kansas. Nice boot as well by the uh, KU kicker. Puts it out of the back of the end zone for the touchback with 3.07 to play in this opening frame. 9-3 Colorado. Bucks will have it first and 10 for their own 20-yard line. Well, Mark, right now, CU's got to take charge of this game and march it down the field. They, their offense is, uh, except for that, when they took advantage of that uh, ball, getting it at the Kansas 43-yard line, they really haven't done much down on their end of the field. And uh, they need a good sustained drive here to really put the clamps on Kansas. Don't let them hang around. Gary said earlier this week, Gary Barnett, think about who we were before the Texas game and who we want to become again. That was the challenge put to this team. Reverse. Hugh Charles running around the left end. Has a blocker out there. Cuts inside. Tyler Palomas now stop and go. Runs across the 25. Darts towards the far sideline and out of bounds. And the 28-yard line ends up being an 8-yard pickup for the Buffaloes on the end around Theo Baines. The defensive back, backup cornerback is there to escort him out of bounds for Kansas. After Charles had 132 yards against Oklahoma State, he's been under 100 the last two weeks. Of course, the passing attack was so good against Texas A&M, 67 yards in that game, and then the Longhorns held him to 38 a week ago. Ball in between the 28-29 yard line. Let's call it second down and a long one from just inside the 29. Ball left, hash mark, back to the offset eye. Charles, the tail of the tandem, flat under center. The senior backpedals to the 20, set up the screen, throws it off, pass is caught by Vickers, and sniffing it out nicely is Nick Reed, the senior from Derby, Kansas. A loss of four yards, they tried the center screen, and Vickers is brought down inside the 25 of the 24. And I talked about a while ago, Zim, James Gary uh, challenging the Buff defense. How about what Nick Reed did this last week after the loss last week uh, to Oklahoma to the offense for Kansas? Yeah, he said, I'd, I'm, I'd like to get in a fist fight with him. <laughs> he was tired of not getting any support from the offense right. for the second game of the row. Kansas put up only a field goal. Nick Reed, a great player. Leading tackler in the Big 12, also number one in tackles for a loss with 12. Third down at six on the 24. Clatt hands off. Hugh Charles for right side. Benton around the corner. Running at the 30-yard line out of bounds as he picked up the first down at the 31. Nice carry by Hugh Charles on a stretch play to the right side. A 70-yard gallop. Rodney Fowler is here to bring him out of bounds, and it's a first down for Colorado. I like that. Uh, this is the one of the top defenses against the rush, and Colorado on third down goes to the outside and runs to Reed's side. Good job. Got to put a hat on Reed. I said that earlier, and uh, he'll be all over the field. We're about 90 seconds away from the end of the first quarter. 9-3 to three Buffaloes. First and 10 now. From their own 31-yard line moving from left to right. Ball right hash mark. Clap to snap. Play action. Bootlegs out to the near side. Looking downfield. Rifles it downfield. Just threw it away. There he comes was, the flag. He was looking for Sipnuski on the near sideline. And a flag comes down at the 16-yard line. The pressure applied by Tim Allen. Well, he threw the ball away, Mark. And, and uh, then Allen proceeded to knock him out of bounds. So roughing the passer is the uh, penalty against Kansas as we get the indication from Steve Usachek. That's just a dumb play. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Number 90 on a defense. 15-yard penalty. First down. Stupid play by a senior. And yeah. Tim Allen, he may uh, share the name of a comedian, but that was not a funny play from KU's perspective. You think you think a college student would be smart? Isn't it? You would, I would hope anyway. One that's been around for a while. So the first down by penalty, first and 10 now for the Colorado 46 yard line. Ball right hash mark. Tight end to the right is Kloppenstein. Slot left formation. Flat under center. Back to the eye behind him. Charles the tail of the tandem. Hugh gets the call. Right side. Breaks one tackle. Nearly goes down. Lunges forward. He's grabbed by Kevin Kane, one of the middle linebacker for the uh, Jayhawks. And all down after a gain of a yard, almost two yards. Kevin Kane has 45 tackles, 26 for a loss. Reed came in with 69 tackles, 37 for a loss, and Banks Floodman, the third linebacker, 44 tackles, 15 for a loss. That's 158 tackles among the three linebackers, 24 and a half tackles for a loss for 85 yards. And you didn't even mention Brandon Perkins, the backup linebacker, has right. got seven and a half sacks for the season. Second down to nine for the 47 pitch, sweeping to his left. Hugh Charles with blockers, cuts up field, finds nothing as he swallowed up and spit out at the 48-yard line. Ends up being a pickup of a yard on the stop. Kevin Kane, that middle linebacker once again. You can see how much they think of these linebackers on this KU defense. Both Floodman Kane and Reed are all captains on this team, along with 
Charles Gordon, those three on the uh, defensive side. Well, they're, they're all three seniors, and uh, they've been playing together for three years. Last year, they combined for 225 tackles, so this is no accident. They're down at eight. For the Buffaloes now for their own 48-yard line. Hugh Charles now shifting from right to left, flanking the quarterback flat out of the shotgun. Slot right formation. Chest high snap. Joel drops, looks right, throws right. Elder Barnett makes the grab of the 45, running at the 40, and picks up a Colorado first down. Hold down by Kevin Kane for Kansas. And Elvin Barnett, Jim, you talked about it a while ago. The Buffs' offensive staff has not been happy with Barnett in the last few ball games, but he made a big catch, a gain of 13 yards, and Colorado with another first down. Mark, that was a big catch, and he wasn't exactly open there. He had a defender right on him, and uh, he was able to still make the catch. He was on a linebacker. That was Kane. And that brings us to the end of quarter number one. Buffs moving the football on offense, leading 9-3 over Kansas here at Bolson Field. Back in a moment on the Colorado Football Network. Buffs football. News Radio 850 KOA. Cool as light. What could be more refreshing? I'll tell you what would be more refreshing. If men never had to answer the question, what are you thinking? That would be more refreshing, okay? If there was a one in five chance that the cable guy would actually show up between one and five, that would be more refreshing. I was thinking what beer could be more refreshing? More refreshing than Coors Light? There is none. Nothing's more refreshing than frost brewed Rocky Mountain Cold Coors Light. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Welcome to the Pepsi Theater Minute. Today, the story of Langusto and Pesto. Ah, Langusto. Oh, Pesto. Cacciatore, lasagna, gorgonzola. Oh, linguini alla carbonara, calzone. Scalupini, tortellini al pomodoro, bruschetta, prosciutto, ricotta. Pepsi. Pepsi, cappellini, salami, pancetta, Pepsi, mortadella. Calzone, Pepsi. Pepsi. Ravioli, scalopine, minestrone, prosciutto. Pepsi e scalopine. Linguini, cannelloni, maccheroni, gnocchi, gorgonzola. Gorgonzola. Bologna. Spaghetti. Antipasti. Parmigiano, provolone, mozzarella, pezzi. <ride> Langusto, calamari. Langusto, Pepsi. Pepsi, food's good. Pepsi, it's the cola. CU Buffs, News Radio 850 KOA. Welcome back for the second quarter at Folsom Field, everybody. Colorado on top of Kansas, 9 to 3 and driving. They're at the Jayhawk 38 yard line. Tonight's game broadcast is brought to you by Pepsi. It's the Cola. Well, we got a fresh 15 on the clock, changing ends now. The Buffaloes now moving from right to left, first and 10 for the KU 38-yard line. Ball right hash mark, back to the eye. Hugh Charles to tail the tandem. Hugh gets the call. He breaks it off the left side, finds nothing there, and he's swallowed up by Charles Keith, the senior defensive end out of Akron, Ohio. A loss of three yards. So the second quarter didn't start out all that well for the Bucs. Well, they're, they're challenging that, uh, that defense, and uh, right now, Kansas has the upper hand against the rush, particularly if you're going up the middle. Let's go down to the sideline. Charles Johnson. Hey, guys, just a quick update on the injury report here. Walter Buedo will return to the football game. Ryan Walters uh, uh, took his shoulder pads off. They will evaluate him at halftime to see whether or not he'll return. All right, CJ, second down and 13 out for the Buffs from the KU 41-yard line. Tight trips, cluster on the right side. Now Kloppenstein, the motion man. Shovels to the backfield. Flat play action. Boots out to the right. Looks downfield. Cocks his arm. Rifles downfield. Catch his man at the 25 by Kloppenstein. Backs his way across the 20. Breaks the tackle. Running at the 10. At the 5. Touchdown. Touchdown. Colorado. Oh, what a play by Joe Kloppenstein as he made the grab with the 25. Had a defender on his right ankle. And he rumbles in from 20 yards out for the score. A 41-yard touchdown strike. Rodney Fowler could not bring him down. And the Buffaloes are on top 15-3. to three. Nearly a minute in the quarter number two. Boy, they're opening up those tight ends. Sipnuski caught the other touchdown pass, so both tight ends have a TD, and just to bring you up to date, that ties flat right now uh, with Detmer with 40 touchdown passes each. One more, and he goes into first place, and that's ten times a touchdown from flat to clop. And by the way, they're creeping up on that record. Bad snap put down by Nick Holtz. Mason cries with a kick, and a great job by Nick Holtz, and we don't mention off of the holder. Got the ball down. The extra point up and good by Mason Crosby. 16-3 to in favor of Colorado. 14.06 to play. And quarter number two, time out of the field. Jim and I are back in a moment on the Colorado Football Network. Colorado Buffaloes football. News Radio 850 KOA. 
This is Larry the Lynx for Frontier Airlines. At Frontier, we're at. Larry, we need to talk. Yeah! Guys, I'm on the air here. Too bad, this can't wait. You expect us to fly 250 flights a day to 52 cities? That's crazy! Beyond the laws of physics. And I'm no lawbreaker! Guys, when I said we're flying 250 flights a day to 52 cities, I meant Frontier as a whole, meaning all of us. I'm just gonna go then. Need anything? Take the bear. Frontier, a whole different animal. Show your pride with the new Buffs checking account from Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo is proud to introduce a great way for CU fans, alumni, staff, and students to show their Buffalo pride. The Buffs checking account comes with all of the excellent features you've come to expect from Wells Fargo and shows the world that you're a Colorado Buffalo. Visit a Wells Fargo Boulder branch today and sign up for Buff checking. Wells Fargo is a proud sponsor of the University of Colorado Athletics. Wells Fargo, the next stage. Buffs football. News Radio 850 KOA. Back to Folsom Field. Colorado now on top 16 to 3. That was an 80 yard drive and eight plays. Took 401 off the old clock. And clap to Kloppenstein. 41 yards for the touchdown on the second play of the second quarter. 1401 left to go now in the half. And the Buffs lead it by the score of 16 to 3. 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Colorado Football Network. Colorado Buffaloes Football 2005. With Mark Johnson and Larry Zimmer. News Radio 850 KOA. Denver, Colorado. Buffaloes set to kick off following a 41-yard strike from Joel Klatt to Joe Kloppenstein. More on that in a moment. They're creeping up on a record, those two, by the way, here in Colorado history. Hay gets back to return. Crosby the foot to it, and it's high end of a ram. This one not going through the uprights, but bounces out of the back of the end zone for yet another touchback. As Zim mentioned, that is the tenth time that Klatt has hooked up with Klopp uh, in their careers. The Colorado record, by the way, Coy Detmer to Ray Carruth for 12 touchdowns. And so uh, I would have to imagine the way those two seem to hook up all the time, Zim, that uh, that'll be another record that Joe Klatt alone half of by the time he's all set and done. You know, he's completed some long passes uh, to Klopp and Stein. It'd be interesting to Maybe I'll get Dave Platty to do that because I'd trust it if he did it. If I did it, I wouldn't trust it. <laughs> but the number of yards on those 10 touchdowns because Detmer used to hook up with Baruth for 80 and 70 and right. 75. Right. Well, I had that 78-yarder in you know, the Houston Bowl last year with Poppenstein. First yeah. and 10 now for KU from the 20 out of the shotgun. Swanson continues the quarterback, looks to his left, rifles it out there, and it's incomplete. Low and behind the 10 wide receiver, the junior from Howardville, Missouri, Brian Murph. He's the junior college transfer at Butler Community College. Jared Burrell on a coverage. Incomplete second down and 10 of coming out for KU. I remember in the Holiday Bowl, the uh, uh, Buffs were, fell behind 14 to nothing. Corey Dillon scored both touchdowns for the uh, Huskies. And, man, they came out uh, from the 20-yard line, and he popped one over the middle for 80 yards to Caruth on wow. first down. And that, that broke the Huskies back. They went on to win. Second down and 10 for the 20. Trips right formation. Tight end to the left side. Inside hand up to Cornish. She runs it up inside, and he's grabbed around the ankle by Jordan Dyson. And Cornish just bounced off of Dyson, and Jordan slid out down, grabbed his right ankle, would not let him go. We've got a Buffalo down to the field uh, in obvious pain down there. No gain, by the way, on the play. We'll get a look and see who it is. It uh, is down hurt. 13.51 to play in this second quarter, 16-3 is uh, the score Colorado on top it's Alex Lagarde who's holding his right knee and Zim the defensive end position is being decimated for the Buffs because Alonzo Barrett against A&M went out with a torn PCL and then we heard earlier about Walter Boydo who was injured and now Alex Lagarde another defensive end is down they're taking a look at his knee right knee 16 to 3 is their score. Time out the field. We'll take a break as well. Buffs on top of the Jayhawks. We're back in a moment here on the Colorado Football Network. CU Buffs. News Radio 850 KOA. Why settle for two when you can have three? I mean, if you can make a triple play, go for it. Third and short, run it. Nobody wants par. You're not racing for the double crown. You're an all pro. Go for three with the Verizon Super Pages. Because the Super Pages are the only yellow pages that go wherever you go. At home, on the road, or at the stadium, use your Super Pages directory, superpages.com, or Super Pages on the go with your cell phone. Hey, if you want the best in the game, we've got you triple covered. The Verizon Super Pages, America's best yellow pages. 
No other playbook gives you three ways to find the information you need. So strike them out. Bring the blitz. Giddy up. Let's see that super pages trifecta. Verizon, we never stop working for you. It's more than the yellow pages. It's super pages. Online, on your cell, in the book. Verizon Super Pages is a proud sponsor of the University of Colorado Buffaloes. Colorado Buffaloes football. News Radio 850 KOA. Back to Folsom Field, and uh, doesn't look good for Alex Lagan. He's up, not putting a lot of weight on that right leg. Let's go down to the sideline to CJ, and uh, that particular position, Charles, is uh, getting pretty beat up. I'll tell you what, you guys are absolutely right. It doesn't look very good. I'll get more information on the, the, the nature of his injury. We know it's a knee, but uh, Lucas, the young guy, a freshman, is going to obviously be pressed into action. I look forward to seeing him a lot more this evening. Right now, Brian Ewell is in her defensive end with Abraham Wright on the other side. That's kind of interesting. Third down and 10 for the 20-yard line. Swanson out with a shotgun. Four wide receivers set to either side for Kansas. And now we finally get the, the time back in from Steve Eustacek, so we're set. Bucks on top, 16-3. to three. Swanson awaiting the snap. Here it comes, and there was all kinds of movement. Both tackles on either side move. Now the buff defensive ends came charging across. Looked like you, it was a procedure against KU. Did you see Jordan Dyson? He was, he saw something in that offense, and he was running across the line. Uh, that's the kind of leadership that Gary Barnett has, was talking about. I mean, he was talking it up, telling everybody what the situation was. Offside. Oh. Defense. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. I don't know about that. Wow, I didn't see that one coming. No, I saw the offensive line move. Yeah, Matt Thompson and Cesar Rodriguez, the two tackles, both came out of their three-point stances. CU football brought to you in part by High Country Wire and Telephone. One-stop shopping for all your business, telephone, and Internet needs. Give her a good buddy Bob Whitfield a call. Great Buff fan, 303-467-5500. After the penalty, third down and five. Kansas is 0-4 on third down conversions here this afternoon. Third and five. Shotgun snap to Swanson. Whips it near side. Murph in and out of his hands. It hit him right in the mix, and he didn't hold on. I think he was hearing footsteps as J.J. Billingsley was bearing down on him. That brings up fourth down, and KU has to punt the football away. Terry Washington was also over there, and I'll tell you what Murph did, because I was looking at him. You know, you got to look the ball into your hands. He took a quick glance to see where those defenders were, and you're exactly right. He heard footsteps. Well, the punter, Kyle Tucker, is back out. He stands at the 11-yard line off to our left. Stephon Robinson to return for the Buffaloes at the 25 off to our right. 13-18 to play in the first half. 16-3 Colorado. Tucker awaits. Good-looking punter. High snap. Holds it down. Right foot to it. It is end of a end. Not terribly deep. Robinson charges forward. Takes to the 29-yard line. Lose one man. Gets a nice block running at the 35-40. Cuts left to the 45-yard line. Hit from behind and holds down at the 49-yard line. And watch out when Stephon Robinson gets it. Last year, he had that 48-yard punt return for a touchdown against Kansas. And don't think for a minute the Jayhawks weren't thinking about that. John Cornish on the tackle for Kansas. A nice return from the 29 all the way up to the 50 uh, of uh, 20 yards. After a 46-yard punt. Let's go down to the sideline once again to CJ. Hey, guys, I uh, just got an update on the situation with Alex Lagan. Uh, they're, they're saying that his return is questionable. But I'm looking at the young man here on the sideline. It doesn't look like uh, it's very questionable to me. He could very well be out for this game. I'll keep you guys posted on that. All right, CJ, thanks. First and 10 from midfield. Ball right, hash mark, right at the 50-yard line. Platt, play action, sets, looks right, delivers right, coming back, slotting down, making a grab with a 41-yard line inside KU territory. He's having Judge right in front of Akeem Talib. And a pick of a nine yards, second down and one, fourth coming down for the Buffaloes. And now we've got a Kansas player down on the field. The uh, line of scrimmage was the 50, and he is lying down at the 45, five yards back from the uh, original line of scrimmage on the far side of the field. Lying on his stomach, 12.50 to play, and this the second quarter. With the injury timeout, we'll go ahead and take a break as well. 16-3, to Colorado leads the Kansas Jayhawks with the football here at Folsom Field. Zim and I are back in a moment on the Colorado Football Network. Buffs Football. News Radio 850 KOA. Listen up, men. Our search objective is the fair sex, and our search radius is the entire 50 states. So what I need is a search of every shoe store, juice bar, health club, and book club in that area. This is what we've all been training for. Now go get them. 
Coors Light and Maxim are teaming up to bring you a nationwide hunt for hotties. We're recruiting every able-bodied man in the country to help us find the next Coors Light Maxim girl. So gather your buddies, grab an ice-cold silver bullet, and start your search at CoorsLight.com. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado, beer. So tell me, what do you love about Keto Mexican Girl? I love the taco salad. It's fast, fresh. Burritos, quesadillas, tacos. Five salsas. Oh, yeah. I got to the point that if I had to eat something one more time that wasn't good for me, just because I was in a hurry, I was going to go crazy. And I found Qdoba, and I'm hooked. Yeah, you can get here for a month straight to get something different every day. Everybody can make what they want, and mm, that's a good burrito. <laughs> that's what I love. That's what I love about Qdoba. Qdoba Mexican Grill. Hundreds of original flavors you won't find anywhere else. All made fast, fresh, and right in front of you. What are you going to love at Qdoba? CU Buffs, News Radio 850 KOA. Well, the injured player for Kansas walks off is Rodney Allen. He's a transfer from Garden City Community College. Buffs second and one. And the uh, timeout official still out the field, but they put the ball back in play on second and one for the 41. And they give it right up the middle to Hugh Charles. He's able to work his way back to the 40 yard line. And I don't think they're giving him a very good spot here. No, he needed not. about a foot. Yeah, they, uh, they spot him. He was actually around just inside the inside of the chalk of the 40-yard line, and they spot him about a half yard outside the 40. The tackle for Kansas by James McClinton. By the way, how about this numbers for Joel Klatt so far? 8 of 10 passing, 100 yards, two touchdowns, and he's hit seven different receivers thus far. Second down and one. Power formation. Two tight ends to the left side. One running back is Hugh Charles Platt getting no push whatsoever up the middle. Is held up right there at the 40-yard line. As if he didn't get the first down on that quarterback, Hugh. No, he didn't. He actually lost yardage. There was no push up front whatsoever by the offensive line for the Buffaloes. Now and that Gary, brings up fourth down and one. Gary Barnett has a little bit of a decision here because he's got a kicker who can kick it. But i got to tell you, that would be a 58-yard field goal attempt for right there. Yeah, but the wind is also in his face. Yeah, it's, it is. It's coming out of the north, and it's a pretty stiff breeze. So I, I don't think you even consider that at this point. Kind of a wind out of the, let's call it, the, out of the northeast. It's kind of running across the field, but it would be in the face of the kicker. And so the Buffs will go for it. On the season, Colorado on fourth down, it's three of five. Fourth and one for the 41. Platt turns. He hands out to Hugh Charles, who broke one tackle. He gets back around the 40-yard line and hauled down. The way the official is run again. He spots it with a 40, and now there's a late push as Paul Creighton got knocked down on the far side by Nick Reed. And if this goes against Kansas, that'll be a first down by penalty for Colorado. They didn't pick it up. They did not get the first down of the carry by Hugh Charles. He was hit about two yards deep in the backfield, broke that tackle, and dove back just shy of the 40. And again, the push and the flag came out when you saw the push by Nick Reed on Paul Creighton. And here comes Steve Usechek, a referee, with 11-11 to play in the first half, and the Buffs on top 16-3. to And what a foolish penalty this would be against Kansas, should it go that way. That would be the second one. They had a roughing the passer earlier on a ball that... We have a dead ball. Personal foul. 28 of the uh, defense. It'll be Kansas ball. 15 yards further back and first down. Okay. All right. Well, that would make sense. A Dead keep, ball. Yeah, a keep to leave is who they called it on. Uh, Nick Reed was in the middle of that melee as well. So the Buffs do not convert on fourth down. They hand it over to Kansas. And as you heard Steve Usachek say, because it was a dead ball foul, it ends up being Kansas football with 11-11 to play in quarter number two. And Colorado on top 16-3. to three. Mark, we might mention we talked about the 40th career touchdown pass for Joe Flat. Uh, the most touchdown receptions by a tight end is 11. So Boppenstein has tied the school record with three others. First down at 10 now for Kansas. From the 25-yard line, shotgun snap to Swanson. Gives off to McAnders to the fullback running. Breaks the tackle. Steve rolls out across the 35. Picks up a Kansas first down as he bubbles his way all the way up to the 37, almost a 38-yard line before Brian Ewu was there to bring him down. That's the longest running play for Kansas of the football game. As they went from the 25 all the way out to the 37, just shy of the 38-yard line, a 12-yard pickup. That was that quick trap for the fullback. You know, I mentioned in those tight ends, they've been some pretty good ones here. When you think of Daniel Graham, who yep. won the Mackey, uh, Christian Fourier before that, J.B. Kane, some great tight ends have played here at CU. 
First and 10 to the 38-yard line. Slot right formation. Back to the eye. Green, the tail of the tandem. Play action. Swanson sets up. Has time. Rifles it downfield. Charles Gordon hit from behind by J.J. Billings. We knocked it away. The late flag is thrown in. Gordon running the post over the middle at the 40-yard line. Billingsley got there from behind, wrapped his arm around him, knocked the football away, and a very late flag thrown into this play. I honestly, I'll have to see the replay, but I honestly thought he got the ball. We're getting a look on the monitor here in our booth. Wow, I don't know about that one. Hey, That's interference. That's it. I don't know about 15. that one. That's a, not a good call. Penalty. It is not a good spot. call. I realize Automatic we're sitting in Colorado's down. booth right now, but I can objectively say that Billingsley got there at the same time the ball did. And he got hands on the ball. I don't think he ever touched the receiver. 10.43 to play in the second quarter. That helps out Kansas. 16-3, to Colorado advantage. But KU with the football now. First and 10 for the Colorado 47-yard line. you got to remember the defender has as much a right to the ball as the receiver. And it was a bang-bang play. There's no question about it. And the official was hesitant. Took him a while to pull it out of his pocket. Herford goes wide to the far side. Gordon and Simmons wide right out of the shotgun. Comes to Swanson and... Jumping through on a blitz from the linebacker position with Thaddeus Washington to jump through the line of scrimmage prior to the ball even being snapped. And he's also going to get a personal foul for that. We well, just got, and again, they'll sort this out. Here we go. Dead ball. Offside. Defense. Number 49. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. Well, we just got an injury update from uh, Alex Lagon. Uh, knee sprain is what they're calling it, as uh, CJ mentioned a while ago. And, they're saying his return is questionable at this point. I think the Buffs got away with one there. I thought they were going to call a personal foul, too, because Washington really hit Swanson pretty hard. 16-3 Colorado, 10-41 to play in the first half. First down at five now for the Colorado 42 for Kansas. Out of the shotgun flank either side is Swanson. Chest high snap, looks left, rifles it through the hands of Herford. It's up in the air and incomplete. It ricocheted off his hands and continued its flight towards the far sideline. No one there close enough defensively for the Buffs to maybe come away with the carol. But incomplete pass, second down at five now upcoming for Kansas. Herford out, Rue comes in, a one wide receiver. The fullback, Brandon McAnderson, also in for Kansas. Now here comes the tight end, now Derek Fine, and he replaces the fullback, McAnderson. Derek Fine has caught 12 passes for 143 yards and a touchdown. He's a sophomore from uh, Oklahoma, Salisbury. Second down at five for the 42. Swanson throws it left side, intended for that tight end, fine, but the pass not so fine as it's over the outstretched right hand on a 70 yard out to the far sideline. Incomplete third down at five now forthcoming. By the way, the defensive ends right now with Logan getting picked up, Walter Boydo at one end, and the other is a young man that they think is going to be an outstanding player, Maurice Lucas. 6'5", 235, the freshman from right here in Denver. That's a big young man. Yes, he is. And he looks to have all the potential in the world. Third down and five now for Kansas. KU 0-5 with third down conversions for the Buck 42-yard line. Four wide receivers set. Green, the lone setback behind Swanson. Swanson, the snap, looks out to his right. White pulls it out there, and it is caught at the 30-yard line. Making a nice grab in traffic off the slant to the right side. Dominic Rue, and he was covered up there by Terry Washington, but Rue held on a gain of 13 yards. First down for Kansas, and their first converted third down of this ballgame. And that's only Rue's second catch of the year. He had uh, one earlier for 16 yards. Merck, Simmons, and Henry have been the workhorses. Dominic Rue is... Uh, Uncle Dimitri Fisher played football for Nebraska a couple of decades ago. Got a bit of football in his lineage. First down and 10 now for KU from about 29 yard line. Trips left formation. Ball right hash mark. One running back is Cornish. She gets the call, runs it up inside, and finds little room to maneuver there. As he's finally hauled down by Bakamata Puna. Now there's some continued tussling down there, and a late flag is thrown in to the pile. Now let's see who this goes against. Hey, things are getting chippy down there in the field by both of these teams. I think that's going against the Bucks. Well, I certainly saw one of the Buffaloes push a Jayhawk. Dead ball. Personal foul on a defense. Number 49. Half the distance. First down. That's Thaddeus Washington. Now Thaddeus is still upset. He, he's been called for offside, and uh, they 
he's been having words with the, the Jayhawks, but that's 35 yards on this drive and penalties for Kansas against Colorado. First and 10 for the 14, hand off to Green. He's hit by Abraham right in the hole down. He was able to kind of get his forward momentum to help fall across the 15 down to the 14. He might have picked up a yard. 9.38 to play in quarter number two, 16 to 3. Colorado with a 13 point lead. It has been 10 quarters since Kansas has scored a touchdown. The last time was back on October 1st when they played at Texas Tech down at Lubbock. They lost that game 30 to 17. Buffs want to continue that streak here. Second down and five from the Colorado 14 yard line. Trips left formation, ball right, hash mark, Swanson inside, handoff to Green. Green breaks one tackle, continues to bustle his way along the right hash mark for a gain of two, maybe three yards. He ends up being hauled down around the 11-yard line. Jordan Dizon on the tackle. And just prior to that snap, Dizon was screaming to the far sideline, to the buff sideline for something. I don't know if he's looking for a defensive call or what, but he turned was very animated, yelling something to the head coach, Gary Barnett, and the staff on the far sideline. All right, now it's a third down. They've got about seven and a half yards to go. And Colorado needs to dig deep here and hold the Jayhawks out, force them into that field goal situation. Kansas one of six on third down conversion. Third and seven for the bump, 11 yard line. Shotgun snap to Swanson. Short drop looks to the far corner of the end zone. Throws it out to Charles Gordon and overthrows him. Out of the coverage, J.J. Billingsley, who was about a half step behind Gordon Swanson, did not put the ball on the money. That brings up fourth down and seven for Kansas. And here comes the kicker once again, Scott Webb, who was good earlier in the ball game to put up the only three points of the contest, a 26-yard field goal, uh, back towards the latter portions of quarter number one. Got to remember something about Swanson. He has not really practiced with the varsity. He's been running the scout team. He hasn't played since midseason last year uh, in the Colorado game. So Webb is out. This will be spotted just inside the 19. So a 29-yard field goal is up. It's on its way. And it is good. 8-14 to play in the second quarter. 16-6 now the score as Kansas has socked through another three points off the foot of Scott Webb. 16-6 to score. Colorado has the football when we come back with the Buffaloes on top of the Jayhawks here on the Colorado Football Network. Colorado Buffaloes football. News Radio 850 KOA. Hey, Buffalo fans. Buffalo Sports Properties and Fantastic Sports are working together this season to take you on the road with the Buffaloes. Available packages include all travel accommodations and game tickets at the best prices available. And in addition to saving money, you'll also be supporting your athletic department. Call toll-free 1-877-FANS-TO-GO. That's 1-877-FANS-TO-GO or go to officialfantour.com. Fantastic sports, affordable packages, priceless memories. This is Larry the Lynx for Frontier Airlines. At Frontier, we're at Larry, we need to talk. Yeah! Guys, I'm on the air here. Too bad, this can't wait. You expect us to fly 250 flights a day to 52 cities? That's crazy! It's beyond the laws of physics. And I'm no lawbreaker! Guys, when I said we're flying 250 flights a day to 52 cities, I meant Frontier as a whole, meaning all of us. I'm just going to go then. You need anything? Take the bear. Frontier, a whole different animal. Buffs football. News Radio 850 KOA. Well, the Jayhawks have uh, put another three points on the board. They took that ball at their 26, used nine plays in two minutes and 57 seconds. Scott Webb with a 29 yard field goal. But I remind you, of that yardage, 35 were by penalty. Colorado had the personal foul. Uh, for 15, they had the pass interference, which I thought was a very bad call. And that was another 15 yards, and then they had the uh, offside for five yards. So Kansas, in that drive, 35 by penalty. Kansas set the kickoff as it teed up at the 35-yard line up to our left. Stephon Robinson and Bernard Jackson set to return for the Buffaloes. It's a deep kick. Out of the back of the end, so that one might have uh, cleared the uprights, actually. So, uh, got a couple of pretty good kickers out here kicking off today. So Scott Webb's got plenty of legs. So the Bucks have it first and ten for their own 20-yard line with 8.14 to play at the first half. Now yeah, the Bucks on top by 10, 16 to 6. They join the Waterway Clean Car Club with four Denver area locations serving you. Waterway is your leading full-service car wash. 
if you want your car really clean, you need it waterway clean. Well, we'll say the same thing. Bucks don't want to let Kansas hang around. And uh, they're only 10 points down, so the Bucks need to put some points on on this possession and take time off. Bumps have it first and 10 for their own 20-yard line, moving right to left. Play action. Clatt has room to run. Now tucks it under, works his way out across the 20, back up to the 23, almost the 24-yard line before he's held down and making the stop was Charles Keith after a four-yard scramble by Joel Clatt. That was a little play action. He was going to look out to the left, but he turned around after faking a handoff. He saw nobody out there. And started the run. The bus, by the way, next week at Kansas State. That game, by the way, has not been selected for television, which means it'll uh, kick off at 12-10 Mountain Time next Saturday in Manhattan. Second down at 6 for the 24. Clatt turns, hands off the Hugh Charles right side. Oh, he was nearly about a half step away from really breaking a big one. Nick Reed on the tackle as Charles is able to work his way across the 25 and tripped up there. And a flag is thrown late in this one. Uh, I think Mark Fenton's going to get called for a hold. Boys, have you watched Hugh Charles? And that time, a little stretch to the right side. And if not for the grab of the ankle there by Nick Reed. I mean, Hugh Charles got the Holding chance. Holding number 58. Yeah, it was the Mark offense. Fenton. 10 yard penalty. The previous spot. Still second down. Okay, so we'll mark off the yardage, but getting back to Hugh. And, and again, that run, regardless, would have come back with a holding call. But, boy, there are so many times when he touches a football, it looks like he is on the verge of breaking another big one. How many, you got to, how many penalty yards do the Buffs have now? It has been a bunch. See, that's uh, 57 yards on six flags so far. Wow. And they came in. 63 penalties for 537 yards. They've got to really clean that up, Mark. 114th in the country in penalties per game. It's really got to clean it up. Yep. 115th in the country out of 117 in penalty yardage. Second down at six for the 14. Clatt bootlegs out to his left, looks downfield, whips it near sideline. Elvin Barnett, a jumping catch at the 16 and knocked out of bounds just inside the 16-yard line on the near side by Nick Reed, that outstanding senior linebacker from Derby, Kansas. A uh, pickup now just a couple of yards, third down and 14 now forthcoming for the Buffaloes. Yeah, and, and you know, you, you should have a first down here if the play it's uh, that with Charles's run, if that had stood. But now you're really battling with third down and long from deep in your territory. Judge wide left. That's the boundary side of the formation as Colorado marches from right to left. Klopp and Stein and Spray go wide right. Klopp in the slot. Third down to 14 for the 16-yard line. Right out of the shotgun. Snap waist high. Back pedal. Swings it off. Left side. Hugh Charles ball hit him in the hands of the 11-yard line. And that goes incomplete as he can't hold on. That brings out the booze on that third down at 14. Byron Ellis, the intended receiver out of the backfield. So fourth down at 14, and John Torp is called upon once again. They got seven penalties for 67 yards. Let's correct those numbers. Well, we knew Kansas would be tough on, de on defense. I mean, we're not seeing anything that we didn't expect here, but uh, Colorado's penalties are just keeping them from getting anything going offensively uh, or sustaining. John Torp at the one-yard line off to our right, set to receive the snap to punt it away to Charles Gordon, who's at the 35 off to our left. 6.28 to play. The other second quarter, 16 to 6, Colorado. And Tommy Hubbard's a busy man out there. He called the plays on that punt team. And now a whistle and a stoppage as the ball is snapped. That might be a delay of game. It is. Yep. There's another one. So make it now eight penalties for 72 yards. Delay game. 29 of the kicking team. Five yard penalty. Still fourth down. And that backs him up into the end zone now. Yep. Jim, this Colorado team's a good football team, but it is killing itself all season long with all these penalties. My goodness. So now Torf is about five yards deep of the end zone. Punting it along the left hash mark. 6.26 to play, 10-point lead for the Buffaloes. Under pressure, gets it away from the goal line. It is high at end of a end. Gordon charges forward, makes the grab of the 44-yard line, running straight ahead, 50, penetrates Buck territory. He tries to sidestep Akarika Don. He's cut down as he stumbles forward to the 46-yard line. But great field position for Kansas following that 46-yard punt under pressure by John Torp and then the short return by Charles Gordon. So Kansas has it with 6-12 to play in the second quarter. 16-6 Colorado lead. Our Verizon Wireless calls around the nation. Nebraska losing to Missouri today, 41-24. Iowa State over Oklahoma State, 
Texas A&M 30, Kansas State 28. More in a minute. First down and 10 for the Jayhawks. Fine is the motion man, the tight end from right to left. From the buff 46-yard line, Swanson. On uh, play action, sets up, has time, rears back, rifles it downfield to Simmons, and it is tipped and incomplete. Beautiful coverage on the post pattern. Simmons running straight down the field, and Jarrett Burrow got up in the air and knocked that away. In fact, it was deflected in the air, and Tyrone Anderson had a shot at coming away with the carob, but could not corral it in. Incomplete. Second down and 10 now, forthcoming for Kansas. Number two, Texas rolled over Texas Tech today, 52 to 17, and. Oklahoma 13 to 6 over Baylor in the second period tonight down in Norman. CSU beat Wyoming 39-31. Uh, TCU over Air Force today 48 to 10. Wow. North Carolina upset number 23 Virginia 7 to 5. That TCU team is pretty good. Second down at 10 for Kansas again for the buff 46. Shotgun snap to Swanson has time. Dumps it off a little. Pass over the middle, caught by Green, running at the 45, inside the 40. He's able to bubble his way all the way down to just shy of the 36-yard line, very close to a first down, depending upon the spot. Nine, maybe 10 yards. We'll see where they put him down. It looks like maybe about a half a yard shy of the first down marker, so third down and short now for Kansas. Number one, Southern Cal did it again, 51-24 over Washington. Florida State, 55, Duke, 24. Wisconsin 31 to 20 over Purdue and Notre Dame beat Brigham Young 49-23. Third down and inches in the 37. Swanson keeps nice push up front by Kansas. First down on the quarterback keeper by Jason Swanson for KU. Thaddeus Washington, the host of Buffalo, is just trying to pile it up and bringing him down. Gain of two yards. Listen to this one from the Southeast Conference. Final score: Alabama number five beats 17 Tennessee six to three. <laughs> One of the games today was a 7-5 game. I'm trying to remember who that was. That was North Carolina over Virginia. Yeah, there you go. 7-5. Sounds like a baseball score. First down at 10 now for the Buffalo 34-yard line for Kansas. Slot wide formation. Back to the eye. Green the tail of the tail behind McAnderson. Swanson play action. Steps up in the pocket. Rifles it downfield. Simmons is out there. And Terry Washington taps it away. He was beaten by a couple of steps with a great speed by the junior college transfer. Came charging back. Got a hand up and knocked it away in the end zone. Incomplete pass, Kansas. How about that play by Terry Washington? Big play by Terry Washington. And uh, Simmons, their leading receiver. So uh, he's not going up against a good guy. That post almost worked earlier. So Swanson goes right back to it. Wow. By the way, our scores... The Verilis, Verizon Wireless calls around the nation. Verizon Wireless, we never stop working for you. We've got 5-0-1 to play, second quarter, 16-6. to The Buffs with a 10-point lead. Kansas with it, second down to 10. From the CU 34-yard line, Swanson, quick drop, looks to his right, whips it out there, Murph the grab at the 27-yard line, and he's pushed all the way back across the 30 and down at the 32-yard line. A couple of bucks there, Terry Washington, J.J. Billingsley, in fact, Ryan Ewell as well, all collaborating on the stop. Uh, the catch by Brian Murph, his 17th reception of the season, a gain of eight yards. So third down, let's call it 70 yards, third down and three now, forthcoming for Kansas for the Buffalo 27-yard line. Well, you'd expect him to work on Washington a little bit. Uh, he's a guy that hasn't had a lot of play at cornerback. He was a running back in uh, high school. Simmons and Gordon go wide to the far side. Rue goes wide right. The tight end fine, line up to the left on third down at three for the 27. Kansas has struggled on third downs tonight and all season. Play action, Swanson, shovel pass to Green at the 30, grab. He breaks the tackle, running at the 25, and he's hauled down at the 25-yard line. Now, depending upon the spot here, I don't know that he got the first down. He needed three, got two for sure. Tyrone Anderson made the stop for Colorado. He's getting a good spot, though. He got a great spot as they put it down inside the 25. You hear the boos from the Colorado student section. It was right equal with that spot. Now they're going to call the chains out to measure this with four minutes to play in this second quarter. And Colorado on top 16-6. to six. While they bring those chains out to measure this potential first down for Kansas, let's quickly pause 10 seconds now for station identification. This is the Colorado Football Network. This is what we do. Colorado's morning news. Mike Rosen. Rush Limbaugh. Dave Logan and Lois Malconian on the ride home. News. Sports. Weather. Time saver traffic. And the Denver Broncos. This is what do we do. On News Radio 850 KOA. Well, they stretch the chains out at a great spot by the officiating crew. And Steve Usachek, our referee, indicates it is a first down for Kansas. Some more booze come running down here at Folsom Field. <laughs> Well, you'd have to say the calls haven't exactly gone Colorado's way tonight. No, no, certainly not. 
We have exactly four minutes to play in the second quarter. Beautiful, cool fall night here at Folsom Field. 16 to 6, bus advantage. K with it, first and 10 for the Colorado 24 yard line. Out of the shotgun, Swanson, slot left. And he's flanked either side by a running back. Chest high snap, inside hand off to Cornish. Runs it off the right side, broke one tackle, still no speed, nearly broke a second. Finally, hold down inside the 20 at the 19 yard line. Gain of 70 yards is stopped eventually by Thaddeus Washington for the Buffaloes. Kansas has had their best success running out of that formation where they put two running backs on either side of the quarterback back in the shotgun, and you just got three guys across the back, and uh, either he can take the ball and pass it or hand it off, as he did right there, and gain of about five and a half, six yards. John Cornish, a six foot, 205-pound junior from New Westminster, British Columbia. That's Canada, by the way. Second down at four from the Colorado 19-yard line, creeping up with a three-minute mark. Cornish alone setback, dropped by Swanson, whips it out left side, intended for Rue, he threw it behind the slant pattern. Rue spun around, trying to reach back with his right hand and grab it, incomplete. Jared Burrow was the nearest defender there, eventually for the Buffaloes, incomplete pass. That brings up third down and four now for KU. Swanson didn't have time to think, Mark. The big old Thaddeus Washington was flying through the line untouched, and he was right there, and Swanson just had to get rid of it. Big old number 49, he has been active in the... More ways than one tonight for the Buffaloes. Third That's down and four. Big third down play here. KU, two of making three of nine on third down conversion. Simmons and Gordon wide left. Root wide right. Out of the shotgun. Swanson on third down and four. Retreating, scanning the secondary. Under pressure. Swings it off. Cornish will grab at the 20-yard line. Running left at the 15. Cuts up field. J.J. Billingsley grabs him and holds him down and out of bounds to the far side. But at the 12-yard line, and he picked up the first down by about three yards. A gain of seven. He needed four. And a new set of downs for Kansas. Swanson, since he came in in relief of Brian Luke's in, has been pretty impressive so far for Kansas. Well, he has, and, and uh, Colorado's defense, Mark, has been on the field a long time here in the second quarter. The Bucks scored uh, on the second play of the second quarter to go up 16-3, uh, to three, and since that time, Kansas has really dominated the football game because the Bucks haven't been able to move on offense. First down at 10 now for KU for the Bucks 12-yard line. Ball left hash mark moving from left to right. Swanson delayed handoff. The Cornish breaks a tackle up inside, and he is hauled down just shy of the five-yard line, and Cornish... Broke through the initial line of scrimmage, picked up six yards, and if not for a great speedy play by Brian Iwu, Cornish would have been in the end zone because once he broke through, there was no one back to defensively, and Iwu, who was off to the left, came charging across and made the stop. Jayhawks took over on the Colorado 45-yard line, and they've driven now down to the five, and truthfully, on this particular series, they're dominating the line of scrimmage. Second down at three. Again, the, they can pick up a first down at the two-yard line. They're at the five. Out of the shotgun, Swanson once again. High snap, play action, option right side, pitches the green, running right at the 10-yard line. He's hit at the 8 and hauled down. A nice job defensively. Terry Washington and J.J. Billingsley stretching it out. Ends up being a loss of a couple of yards. On uh, the uh, little option play to the right-hand side, the Buffs snipped that one out nicely. Brian Ewell also over there running laterally. Colorado has done a good job of covering the field laterally, and Kansas will take a timeout. So we've got a timeout in the field. We'll uh, keep it right here with the 149 to play in quarter number two. The Buffaloes on top 16 to 6. Nice to have you along tonight here on the Colorado Football Network on our flagship here in the Mile High City. News Radio 850 KOA. And also welcome you listening in Durango tonight on KRSJ 100.5 FM. The general manager there is Ward Holmes. So we thank the folks at uh, KS or KRSJ for being on the network. You know, we mentioned that uh, Kansas has not scored touchdown in now 10 quarters, and they've also been held under 300 yards in their last four games. But their offense, particularly since Swanson has come in, has been a little more effective tonight. Defensively, only one team has scored more than 19 points on them this season, and that was Texas Tech. Yeah. They won 30-17, to 17, but that was 24 points below their average. Tech held today to 17 against uh, number two Texas. Hey, Buffs fans, Meyer Laser Center is offering you the chance to win the view of your life, two 50-yard line seats, and a chance to be on the field when Ralphie brings out the Buffs at the Nebraska game. Visit Meyer Laser Center at BoulderEyes.com. And uh, go on by there and talk to those folks about getting their procedure done, their LASIK procedure done. My wife had it done here a couple of days ago, and what a world of difference it has made for her and certainly can for you as well. I know you're disappointed that uh, next week's game is not going to be a night game because uh, 
I know you were looking forward to spending a, a Saturday in uh, Manhattan, Kansas. Oh, no, if I could only dream. That one again, if you didn't hear us earlier, will not be televised. That'll be a 12 10 kickoff. Mountain time. 149 to play in the second quarter, 16 6 Colorado. Kansas threatening. Third down and six from the eight yard line. Swanson out of the shotgun, flanked to his right by Green. Chest high snap, retreats, looks left, throws it out there to Charles Gordon, and he dives, makes a grab, touchdown, Kansas. Hadn't heard that much. No, you haven't. See, in the streak of 10 consecutive quarters without a touchdown, has been snapped. As for the second time here at 05, Charles Gordon, Mr. Do Everything. I know that Cordell Stewart's the original slash, but uh, Gordon's done a nice job in that regard, playing offense, defense, special teams. He makes the grab in the end zone for the touchdown. He got by J.J. Billingsley. That quiets the crowd here at Folsom Field as it's now 16-12 to with a buck 44 to play in the second quarter. The extra point attempt by Scott Webb. Snap, spotted, booted. The kick is up. It's on its way, and it is good. And that made things a little bit more interesting here in the latter portion of the first half. Well, that's a 12-play drive. It took a little over four minutes to do it, and Swanson uh, throwing to Gordon for a seven-yard touchdown, and now it's down to three, and I don't want to sound like a broken record, but the Bucks need to do something on offense. They had, the defense obviously had been on the field a long time, and I thought they looked at it in that drive. Took four minutes and 28 seconds off the clock. Yeah, 12 plays, 54 yards. Gordon, an eight-yard reception from Swanson. And the extra point makes it 16 to three in favor of the Buffaloes with a buck 44 to play here in the second quarter. Bernard Jackson and Stephon Robinson back to return now for the Buffs. And uh, Colorado like to do a little bit of damage here at the end of this first half to try and give them some momentum heading into the locker room. Well, they've been pretty good with the two-minute drill, and we'll see what they can do. They do have the wind in their face, and uh, it's probably uh, a little stiffer than it was at the beginning of the game, so that might cut down a little bit on the effective effectiveness or distance of Mason Crosby if you're looking field goal. So we'll see. Webb is set to kick off. He's got a teed up at the 35-yard line off to her left. And again, there's been very little return action in this ballgame with these two kickers. Webb approaches, puts the right foot through it, high and end over end. Jackson and Robinson run to the back of the end zone. It falls about nine yards deep. And the Buffs will have it first and 10 for their own 20-yard line once again. So here comes Joel Platt early in the ballgame through his second touchdown of the night and tied Coy Detmer on the all-time list with 40 career touchdown passes. He's also creeping up on Cordell Stewart. Now uh, 260 yards or so away from Cordell Stewart, the all-time passing yards list here in Colorado history. It's amazing that Clatt, assuming that he doesn't get hurt somewhere along the line in yep. the next few weeks, he's going to be have all of top quarterback statistics in CU history. First and 10 for the 20. Slot left formation. Buffs moving right to left. Shotgun snap to Clatt. Looks off to his right. He pumps and then tucks it and runs forward back to the 20-yard line for no gain. Total snaps in this ballgame. Eric Butler, by the way, in the tackle. Total snaps in this ballgame. 42, Larry, for Kansas. 25 for Colorado. Part of it's been the penalties that have hurt, hurt the Buffs, but uh, also just been very ineffective. 119 to play. Clatt again out of the shotgun. It's second and 10 for the 20. Shotgun snap. Just high. Clatt retreats. Sets up. Steps up in the pocket. Throws it off the right side. And Dusty Sprague running a curl pattern off the right side. Makes the grab with the 25. And then works his way forward out to just shy of the 30. He gains about nine yards. He's about a yard shy of the first down marker. Akeem Tlaib on the tackle for Kansas. Well, and that's the key, too, because that keeps the clock rolling inside a minute. Third down to one, quarterback keeper, and a bit of a push up front for the Buffaloes. They pick up the yard needed, and the first down for Colorado. Clock stops at 49 seconds remaining. Colorado has all three timeouts remaining. Sipnuski in, Kloppenstein out at the tight end position. First and 10 for the 30 now, just on the outside edge of the 30 yard line. Slot left formation. Sipnuski, the tight end, lines up to the right. Ball right hash bar. Clatt out of the shotgun flank to his left by Hugh Charles. Shotgun snap. Under pressure. Steps up. Throws it left side. And the safety valve is Hugh Charles. He had a defender right behind him. But Hugh had the ball go in and out of his hands. And right behind him on coverage was Kenneth Thompson, the nickelback. 
for Kansas. Incomplete. That stops the clock with 39 seconds remaining now in quarter number two. Well, they've got to give Platt a little bit uh, better protection, and uh, he's been rushed the last three plays, and uh, that's why he's hurting. Uh, Jermiel Ashley was in on that play and right on him, and, and uh, Platt had to go to his safety valve because he, did, he was going to get sacked otherwise. Gary Moore out of the lineup on the offensive line. Second down at 10 now for the Bucks of 30. Shotgun snap to Clack. Deep drop back to the 20. Here comes pressure now. Flush to his right. Running, looks downfield. Pumps, dives as he tries to get back to the 30-yard line. And he is hauled down shy of the far sideline, which continues to clock running now. 28 seconds. No, wait, now they whistle it there. Do they say he got out of bounds? No, I think they called a timeout. Okay, now we get the indication. Was a timeout called by Colorado? It ends up being a yard gained. Paul Como. The uh, defensive end, the transfer from Dana Point, California. And that was a cover cover, a uh, cover uh, situation because Platt had time that time, but he simply didn't have anybody downfield. Talib and, and Gordon, two good cornerbacks, and Randy Fowler, one of the top uh, interceptors in the conference, tied for first with three. Uh, really good free safety. Yeah, they got some good players in the back end. Fowler, you mentioned, Charles Gordon, goes without saying. He uh, had two picks last week in the 19-3 loss to Oklahoma. Speaking of which, the uh, Sooners now leading Baylor 17-13 with just inside five minutes to play in the first half in Norman, Oklahoma. Those Bears keep hanging in, don't they? Oh, boy. Those Baylor Bears got a pretty good little defense on them. And as we found out, that Oklahoma team is not the Oklahoma team we've become accustomed to in the last few years. Bus facing a third down and nine for their own 32-yard line. 28 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Colorado at one point was up 16 to three. Ten unanswered by Kansas, including that reception of eight yards by Charles Gordon here just a few minutes ago. So Clatt wants to get out of the shotgun. The Bucks three of seven on third down conversions. Slot left formation, ball right hash mark, chest high snap. Here comes pressure again. Whips it down the right side. And Patrick Williams up in the air. Incomplete. Goes through his hands. Akeem Tlaib on the coverage. Running a streak down the right side just in front of the Colorado bench. I think Tlaib got a hand on that, didn't he? He might have. Tlaib's yeah. a big guy. Now, Patrick Williams is a big fellow as well. Six foot two, but Tlaib's 6'2 as well. That brings up fourth down. And now John Torp is going to have to pump this away. Yeah, Tlaib got a hand on it. Knocked it away from uh, Williams. 23 seconds remaining in the second quarter. And John Torf to kick, and he's kicking to one of the most dangerous returners in the Big 12 Conference, and Charles Gordon. 23 returns, about 12 yards per, at a 54-yarder early this season. From the 20-yard line, Torf puts the foot to it. It is short. It bounces at the 37, and then takes an angled bounce out of bounds to the far side and rolls out of bounds at the 33-yard line. Kansas has it with 15 seconds remaining. Now the Bucks on top by a field goal. Mark, that was a 35-yard punt, but to be honest, I think that was intentional. I don't think there was any way he wanted to put that ball into Gordon's hands. Right. So he kicked it short to the sideline, and uh, that leaves 15 seconds on the clock. So here comes the quarterback, Jason Swanson, for Kansas, who has looked good in this ball game. He's 9 of 18 for 96 yards and a touchdown, and the offense came to life when he came on the field. But now there's a safety formation. He's just going to take a knee, and he does. And that will allow the first half to run out. So Kansas after, should be happy with, with where they are right now. Kansas should be very happy. The right. Buffaloes, however, should not be happy. After jumping out 16-3, to the offense sputtered, and then the defense was left on the field far too long. And Kansas has scored 10 on answer. And so we go to the break for the Buffaloes on top of the Jayhawks here at Folsom Field, 16-13. to 13. Your halftime report straight ahead. Stick with us. This is the Colorado Football Network. CU Buffs, News Radio 850 KOA. Why settle for two when you can have three? I mean, if you can make a triple play, go for it. Third and short, run it. Nobody wants par. You're not racing for the double crown. You're an all-pro. Go for three with the Verizon Super Pages. Because the Super Pages are the only yellow pages that go wherever you go. At home, on the road, or at the stadium, use your Super Pages directory, superpages.com, or Super Pages on the go with your cell phone. Hey, if you want the best in the game, we've got you triple covered. The Verizon Super Pages, America's best yellow pages. 
No other playbook gives you three ways to find the information you need. So strike them out. Bring the blitz. Giddy up. Let's see that super pages trifecta. Verizon, we never stop working for you. It's more than the 